As a frontiersman, soldier, politician, and one hell of a hat wearer, Davy Crockett achieved folk hero status soon after his death in 1836, and his posthumous reputation continued to grow throughout the 20th century. The famous Ballad of Davy Crockett by Fess Parker offers all kinds of catchy brags and tall tales, even suggesting he killed Tim a bar when he was only three. Well, today we're going to take a look at some unbelievably macho tales of Davy Crockett. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other historical tough guys you would like to hear about. Okay, time to take a look at the King of the Wild Frontier. When it comes to school, Davy Crockett made Bart Simpson look like Lisa Simpson. In fact, by his own account, Davy Crockett only attended school for exactly four days because he got into a fight with one of the other boys, making him, in his own words, cry out for quarters in good earnest. After that, Crockett never returned to the schoolhouse, which we imagine worked just fine for that other boy. Crockett pretended to go to school with his brothers for several days following his extracurricular beating, but a teacher eventually wrote a note to his father. When his father asked him about his truancy, Crockett told him he was afraid to attend for fear of the teacher whipping him. His father threatened to whip him as well, so, caught between a whip and a, uh, another whip, he fled. The young Crockett ended up leaving Tennessee, working several jobs before pulling a prodigal son and returning home two years later. But if he was expecting a warm welcome, he would not get it. When he arrived at his father's home, he claimed he had been gone so long and had grown so much that the family did not at first know him. But he understood that it wasn't so much about his growth as it was that his family had long since given up on him and no longer had any thought or expectation of him. It was awkward. Davy Crockett married Mary Polly Finley in 1806, presumably because Davy and Polly sound so fun together. They had three children, John Wesley, William, and Margaret, and they all lived in Tennessee near Winchester. Happy family, right? Well, the Creek War began in 1813, with the Creek tribe splitting into factions. One group, the Red Sticks, attacked Fort Mims on August 30th, taking the lives of militiamen, civilians, and Creek allies. The ambush prompted national outrage, and Davy Crockett volunteered to fight. Crockett, as he recalled, had none of the dread of dying that I expected to feel, so his wife Polly felt it instead. According to Crockett, she begged him not to leave, pointing out that she was a stranger where they lived and had no family connections anywhere nearby. While it was, in his words, mighty hard to go against such arguments as these, Crockett went off to fight, convinced that further attacks would ensue if no one put a stop to them. And he had too much to lose to let those unmarried men take up the task. He explained that he had to go to Polly, but according to him, all she did was to cry a little and turn about to her work. Nobody had time for drama back then. During the conflict with the creek, meat was incredibly scarce among the troops, so Davy used his frontier skills to feed his fellow fighters. Every group needs at least one person who knows how to cook. His efforts extended to animals of all kinds. He hunted turkeys when he could find them, and after discovering a deceased deer, he gave the meat away, only keeping enough to make a good supper from a mess. The next day, he discovered a large gang of hogs, and he shot one of them down in his tracks. Crockett's efforts set the rest of the hogs toward camp, and his team opened fire on them, taking out a good many of the hogs and a fine fat cow that had wandered free. Luckily, they were frontiersmen who never ventured into grocery stores, or else they may have wound up firing volleys into the produce section. Crockett also said that hunting bears was one of his favorite activities, and claimed to have taken down more than a hundred of them during a single hunting season. So if bears go extinct, you know who to blame, Davy. Later in life, Crockett recalled a dangerous situation after firing on one particular bear. The bear raised one of its paws and snorted loudly. Crockett reloaded as fast as he could and fired at the same place he previously hit. At the crack of the gun, the bear fell on one of his dogs which ignited his inner John Wick. He took his tomahawk in one hand, his knife in the other, and ran up to within a few paces of the animal, at which point the bear let the dog go and fixed its eyes on Crockett. Crockett hastily loaded his gun and shot the bear a third time, which put it down for good. When it comes to animalistic mayhem, Crockett really had those bear necessities.
Perhaps due to a mysterious connection between governance and bear fighting, Davy Crockett served as a Tennessee congressman several times during the 1820s and 1830s. But as his political career developed, his relationship with President Andrew Jackson went from fellow soldier to opponent. And based on Crockett's record, we don't like Jackson's odds. However, whatever political differences existed between the men didn't prevent Crockett from coming to Jackson's aid in 1835. Then President Jackson was visiting the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. for the funeral of South Carolina Congressman Warren Davis. Crockett also attended the service. And when would-be assassin Richard Lawrence drew two sidearms and fired them at Jackson, Crockett was one of the men who wrestled the assailant to the ground. And as Crockett and the other men subdued Lawrence, Jackson reportedly beat him with his cane. It was like a scene from Oliver Stone's Fast and Furious. Crockett later said of the event, I wanted to see the damnedest villain in the world, and now I've seen him. The guy was tough, and he was great at cutting a wrestling promo. Crockett was perceived as uneducated and unrefined by his political rivals, possibly because of his lack of schooling. So he had to use his frontiersman persona to his advantage. His charm and wit on the campaign trail garnered him great favor, and he was known to incorporate humor into his speeches and take jabs at his opponents. In other words, he was the original, I could have a beer with him candidate. When he ran against William Edward Butler for an 1823 General Assembly seat in Tennessee, the odds were against him. Butler, a nephew-in-law to Andrew Jackson, was much better educated than Crockett. Even Crockett considered him a clever fellow, and I've often said he was the most talented man I ever run against for any office. That's high praise from a guy who tells people he smoked 100 bears. But at one fateful campaign stop, Crockett insisted on speaking first, despite usually speaking after Butler. He proceeded to recite one of Butler's stock speeches word for word. Embarrassing his dumbstruck opponent in a moment we imagine looked something like a frontier version of the end of Eight Mile. In the end, Crockett won by a majority of 247 votes and was again returned as a member of the legislature from a new region of the country without losing a session. No mom spaghetti necessary. When President Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act in 1830, it gave him the power to shift Native American groups from their lands to unsettled locations west of the Mississippi River. The relocation of Native tribes was not universally accepted, with Crockett becoming one of the spokesmen of its opposition. And as a result, he was subjected to a smear campaign when he ran for congressional re-election in 1831. He lost that election, but later commented that he'd rather be beaten and be a man than be elected and be a little puppy dog. But by 1834, Crockett was back in Congress, and presidential candidate Martin Van Buren was banging Jackson's Indian removal drum. Crockett remained so against this policy that he said, I have almost given up this ship is lost. I've gone so far as to declare that if Martin Van Buren is elected, that I will leave the United States, for I will never live under his kingdom. Before I will submit to his government, I will go to the wilds of Texas. Let's see, oddly specific ultimatum today, but back then, Texas was a whole other country. Yeah, that's right. Davy Crockett was one of those people who threatened to leave the country if the candidate he opposed won the presidency. Only, Crockett actually made good on it. After he lost another re-election campaign in 1835, he moved to Texas. And while it's easy to admire him for sticking to his word, his time there wouldn't end well. Crockett arrived in East Texas in January 1836, making his way through Nacogdoches and San Augustine before arriving in San Antonio. By the time he got there, the Texas Revolution had grown to include thousands of Mexican troops, led by Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, all trying to quash the Texas independence movement. About 200 Texas militiamen based themselves at the Alamo Mission as Santa Ana and his men approached. Crockett simply could not catch a break. In anticipation of the forthcoming siege, Crockett and the other men inside gathered supplies and did their best to prepare. Crockett was said to have provided some levity, making jokes, telling stories, and probably teaching a long-form improv class or two. Okay, your suggestion is surviving impossible odds. Now, go! The siege of the Alamo lasted 13 days, with the severely outnumbered Texans holding out until the walls of the compound were breached on March 6th. Crockett perished during the battle, although not everyone agrees as to how. Some believed he went down swinging, 
But according to an account penned by Mexican Lieutenant Colonel Jose Enrique de la Peña, Crockett survived the actual siege and surrendered to Santa Ana, only to be executed soon after with six others. However, according to de la Peña, Crockett made his fate without humbling himself before his executioners. That does sound like our guy. Crockett's legend grew after his passing until he became one of the United States' best-known folk heroes. He's been played in movies by everyone from John Wayne to Johnny Cash to Billy Bob Thornton. Disney even wrote him a sing-along theme song to go along with a series of television specials about Crockett's exploits, which undoubtedly kept his legend alive. Never underestimate the power of a catchy tune. So what do you think? Was Davy Crockett the most macho dude in history, or were they all just tall tales? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.